matter with you, their life will never We can show it by giving a shout to the Lord wherever you are. Oh, come on. Give the Lord a... Don't be, don't be afraid. Amen. We give you glory. You are wonderful. You are worthy, oh Lord. You are wonderful. You are worthy, oh Lord. You are wonderful. You are worthy, O oh Lord. You are wonderful. You are worthy, O oh, sing it be say. You are wonderful. You are worthy, O oh. lift up your voice with me and say, Darful, you are worthy. One more time we're singing, you are wonderful, oh, you are worthy, sing it again, you are wonderful, you are worthy, we give you glory, say we give you glory, Lord, as we are to you, that's our song today. We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. You are wonderful. You are worthy, Lord. Oh, 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 oh. You are wonderful. You are sing it again. You are. Jesus, are you ready to give praise to the Lord? Hey, clap your hands, everybody. Come on, let's go. Come and see what the Lord has done for me. He has taken away my sorrows and I am free. I can 
Because of Jesus, every day now shakara they do. Double, double, double the blessings I even they receive. Ah, hey. God, your grace and mercy is always a follow me. Ah, yeah, hey. Everybody, come on. He has given me victory. Sing it. Ah, yeah, yeah. He has given me victory. One more time. We sing, ah, yeah. Is 
working. It's working. It's a working. It's working. Hey, Onaga. Onaga. Hey, Onaga. 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 Is it working? It's working. It's working. It's working. It's the blessing working. It's working. It's the favor working. It's working. It's working. It's working. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Come and help me say it. one, two, here we go. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Sing hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah.
oil of favor may it rest on you I see this oil being poured on someone right now in the name of Jesus somebody lift up your hands and just speak to the Lord and tell him oh Lord let your oil of favor rest upon me in the name of Jesus lift up your voice and begin to speak right now that the oil of favor will fall on you it will rest upon you it will rest upon you as an individual in your family in your business in the name of Jesus let the oil of favor rest upon you let the oil of favor rest upon us as a church let it rest upon you let the oil of favor fall on us right now let the oil of favor rest upon us right now let the oil of favor rest upon me let the oil of favor rest upon me right now somebody lift up your voice and pray right now that the oil of favor will rest upon you in the name of Jesus let me hear you speaking let me hear you praying right now in the name of Jesus and God said uh, to the people of Israel in Egypt uh, that uh, my favor will go with you and you shall not go empty handed uh, but in the month of December may God favor me may God favor us uh, in the name of Jesus let the favor of our God uh, rest upon us uh, in the name of Jesus uh, let the oil of relevance uh, rest upon my head uh, in the name of Jesus let the oil of favor rest upon the choir let the oil of favor rest upon the intercessory department uh, let the oil of favor rest upon the protocol department uh, let the oil of favor rest upon the pastoral powder uh, let the oil of favor rest upon uh, our couples are in the house uh, individuals in the name of Jesus let the oil of favor rest upon the men of integrity let the oil of favor rest upon the ladies of integrity let the oil of favor rest upon us as a church uh, let the oil of favor rest upon us uh, in the name of Jesus Psalms 90 and the verse 17 oh yes 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 the, let, let, let the oil of favor rest upon us uh, let the favor of God uh, Rest upon this people in the name of Jesus. Uh, give me the NIV version of it. Uh, somebody pray right now that the favor of God uh, will rest upon you. It will rest upon you in this month of December. May the oil of favor rest upon you in the name of Jesus. Uh, my favor. May the favor of the Lord our God uh, rest on us. Uh, Establish the works of our hands. Uh, somebody pray right now that the favor of the Lord uh, will rest uh, upon your business. Uh, upon your business. Uh, the works of your hands uh, will no favor in the name of Jesus. Speak right now. Pray right now. That favor will rest upon you. Favor will locate you. It will locate you and your children, your sons and daughters. The favor of God is upon you. The favor of God is upon the service. In the name of Jesus, let the favor of God rest upon you. In the name of Jesus, I declare over your life this week and this month and throughout the year, that the favor of God rests upon you and by virtue of God's favor any impending danger between now and the end of the year we counter it by the power of the blood and by the favor of our God in the name of Jesus oh Lord deliver us from harm's way in the name of Jesus this week let favor be activated on every side, in the name of Jesus, Spirit of the living God, we thank you for your favor. Your favor upon our businesses. Your favor upon our marriages. Your favor upon the service. Your favor upon individuals. Your favor upon us all. In the name of Jesus, shout an amen. James 1 verse 21. Ready? James 1, James chapter 1, verse 21, our annual text. Let's read this together. Ready, go. 
Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word planted in you which can save you. Put your hands together and give the Lord some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we give a shout unto the Lord if the Lord has been good to you from January to December? Hallelujah. Welcome to Trinity Baptist Church, East Legon, an oasis of restoration. We are a church that is committed to the Great Commission, transforming lives and fulfilling destinies. Please, let's take note of the following announcement. Our new, our new converts, baptismal and discipleship classes continues and are being held every Sunday right after first service at the Porter's Cabin outside the stairway at the church exit. Join the membership class today and become a full member of Trinity Baptist Church. Also, if you wish to get baptized this year, kindly register at the church reception. Our scheduled baptism has been postponed to Saturday, the 16th of December. All registered members should kindly take note of the new date. The next baby dedication comes off on Sunday, the 10th of December 2023. All who wish to dedicate their babies should kindly pick up a form from the church receptionist after service. As part of the Christmas festivities, the leadership of the church presents a special Christmas business fair on Saturday. Sorry, on Sunday, the 17th of December 2023. In view of this, all members who deal in all kinds of goods and services are to register to participate in the fair. The registration cost is 200 CDs and the deadline is 15th December. Our nine lessons and Carol's nine service comes off on Friday, the 22nd of December from 6.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. right here in this very auditorium. Ministrations include Oasis Chorale, SOI, Cradle of Worship, Sunday School, and many more. Bring your family and friends for a wonderful time in his presence. Our Watch Night service comes off on the 31st of December with our very own Reverend Kingsley APJ ushering us into the new year. And we are going to be led by administration by Minister Dinah Hamilton, SOI, Oasis Choral, and a lot of artists will be in attendance. Kindly invite friends as we pray into the coming year. Volunteers are urgently needed to support the first watch night service. A team of volunteers to help handle the overflow during the watch night service on the 31st. So please, if you want to register and be a volunteer, can you see Minister Raymond Ellie after service near the instrumentalist? Our ways of giving remain star 447, star 44 hash, and star 800, star 80, star 44 hash. You can also give through your Visa card or your MasterCard by simply going to trinitybaptist.mychurchpay.com or through our Fidelity account details on your screen. God bless you as you continue to support the growth of his kingdom. Hallelujah. We encourage everyone to like, share, and keep sharing the Facebook page or our social media platforms. On Facebook, we are TBC Ghana. On Instagram, we are TBC Ghana. And on Twitter, which is now X, TBC underscore Ghana. Your feedback is very, very important to us. So kindly take note of the link and share your feedback with us. We also encourage everybody to download the TBC app, which is TBC Accra, to get push notification buttons. With a round of applause, please, let's welcome Oasis Choral. Hallelujah. Uh, can, we, can we all be upstanding and sing this in MH317?
Hallelujah, church. Oh, please, I didn't hear anything. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. This morning, we are here to encourage you. We are here to tell you that whatever God has promised you, he will definitely fulfill it. He will never fail. Amen. Come on, put your hands together for the Lord like this. All of your problems, all of your pain, all of your troubles, you can give it to Jesus. All of your burdens, even your struggles you can give it to Jesus he won't fail he won't fail no he won't leave you no he won't fail he won't fail he won't fail no he won't leave you no he won't all of your problems, all of your care, even your troubles, you can give it to Jesus. All of your burdens, all of your care, even your struggles, you can give it to Jesus. He won't fail you. He won't fail. He won't fail.
happy to be in the house of Jesus. Are you a soldier for Jesus? Are you a soldier for Jesus? Call my name, so Jesus, if you call my name, Jesus, 
Great is the faith And morning by morning New mercies I see And all my amazing Thoughts have always provided Great is thy faithfulness, Lord. Oh, and I'm a boy to me, so I adore you so. From January to December And yeah, one now One for my And yeah, one Way me free of some put your head In our remote to me so
hands together for Jesus. What a presence. Glory to God. Glory to God. Please take your seats. Sonny will be with us at 9.30 this morning. He had a small accident and will be coming in clutches. So we've got him a chair and he'll be sitting on the chair to minister uh, this morning. He was in the hospital, but he's been discharged. I asked him to rest, but he says I can't. So we will see him at 9.30 this morning. But to bring us God's word this morning is our own brother, friend, and pastor that we've all come to love, Dr. Romeo. We can do better for Jesus. Bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Daddy, for giving me the opportunity to share the word of God with us this morning. And Mommy, God bless you. And for all the pastoral team and the leadership, I'm grateful for this opportunity. And to you in particular for accepting me to share the word of God. Shall we bow down our heads and share a word of prayer? Our dear Lord, we come before you this morning to hear you speak to us. Bless us through the power of your Holy Spirit. Let us hear you speak and not me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please kindly take your seat. Hallelujah. Yeah, we are in December. God has been good to us. Indeed, he's been good from January throughout to 30th November. And more importantly, he has ushered us into December. And I want us to share, hallelujah, give God a clap for what he has done for us. He's been good. And he has heard our prayers. He has delivered us from all kinds of trouble that the devil sought to bring our way. And we have every cause to thank him for what he has done for us. For our team, for the year has been the word, the word, the word. Last year, we had for our team the power of the living word. And we continue with this one, the word. So if we are to be students, by now we should be graduating from the word. Hallelujah. And I know we have had so much to learn about the word. And this morning, I share with you one character in the Bible that I have come to love. The character Daniel. Daniel. And I've titled my sermon, Daniel, the Word Practitioner. Daniel, the Word Practitioner. I'm a medical doctor, so I call myself Medical Practitioner. How did I become a practitioner? Because I went to learn in the medical school. And whatever was taught me, I am putting it into practice. And so we want to identify with Daniel that whatever we have heard from the Word through this pulpit and throughout the year that God will cause us to live our life in that practicality of the word to his glory. And I take my passage from Daniel chapter 6 verse 10. Daniel chapter 6 verse 10. When Daniel knew that the document has been signed, he went to his house where he had windows in his upper chamber open towards Jerusalem. He got down on his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God. And as he had done previously. This is an interesting part. That there was a decree. And Daniel heard about this decree. And you and I would have thought that something else should have been done by Daniel. But he chose to go into his chamber to thank God for that decree. And this is what I want us to learn from Daniel. That Daniel was one of the few young guys who were taken into captivity by King Nebuchadnezzar. When one king was ruling in Judah, King Jehoiakim, this king was so wicked and he reigned at the time that Jeremiah was also a prophet in Israel. To the extent that one of the prophets spoke against the wickedness of his behavior. 
and he sought to kill this prophet. The prophet ran away all the way to Egypt and he sent people to go and bring him and he killed him. And he is a man of God who was leading the people of the of God himself. And one would have said, who is this Joachim? He was the son of one of the renowned kings of Judah, Josiah, who reigned when he was only six or seven years old. But how come that at the death of his father, this guy mounts the throne or is put on the throne and something else happens? And he did so bad that God had to bring the book at Nazar to punish him. But Daniel was taken by Nebuchadnezzar with other children. And he sought that even though he may have been 17 years, but the little that he knew about his God, he chose that he would leave that in practicality in the foreign land that he found himself in Babylon. And he lived so well with the word. All that he knew was what he had been taught from his infancy till this time. And he was able to live to honor God. Daniel can be described as a prophet of God. Or in other parlance, you can also say that he is the companion of kings. He was one, prophet of God. And two, he can also be described as companion of kings. And not only kings in Israel, but rather foreign kings. All Daniel lived in the span of five kings. King Jehoiakim in Israel when he was taken captive to Babylon under King Nebuchadnezzar. And then came his son, Belshazzar. And then came Darius, the Medi. And then came Cyrus, the Persian. But if you read through all history, every king that reigned, when was Daniel was alive, had Daniel at heart. And the question is, why would somebody who is a foreigner, who finds himself in a foreign land, be the toast of kings? It's all because he chose to live by the word and practically live according to the word. And what is certain is that Daniel lived in a world of profound spiritual challenges. Can you imagine that you are serving God and all of a sudden you are told, stop serving God and rather serve an idol. And he chose to stand against some of the things that were abominable to him. And the Bible says that in such challenges, God proved himself faithful. He comes from the royal lineage. Actually, there are two Daniels that I came across. The first Daniel is a son of David with Abigail. But that one is long time ago. And then come this particular Daniel who was a youth who has been taken into captivity. But he still comes from the lineage of royalty in David's line. And through him, as we go along, we realize that God will prove that he is indeed the true creator God. And that spiritual wisdom comes from him. The book of Daniel can be summarized in, under these four categories. That we see the sovereignty of God, number one. You, we read Daniel chapter 1, verse 1. Let's go to Daniel chapter 1, verse 1. And see what the sovereignty of God is in. Daniel chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord delivered Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand, along with some of the articles from the temple of God. These he carried off to the temple of his God in Babylon and put it in the treasure house of his God. And the question is, why should God allow a heathen, an unbeliever, to come to his people and take articles that were in his temple and be put in a foreign idol temple. God is sovereign. He chooses what he wants to do. And we will see that he was proving a point. Number two, 
The book of Daniel also reveals that God is in control no matter what. Whether culture, situations, or people around you, God still proves himself to be in control of situations in our lives. And number three, God has a plan for every one of his children and for everything he does in your life. He has a plan. The plan can be specific and most of the times, they are perfect in everything that God does in our lives. And last but not the least, the book of Daniel also tells us about we serving God right wherever we may find ourselves. Wherever you find yourself, know that the God you serve will be with you. And when you prove yourself faithful, he will also be with you. Proverbs chapter 22 verse 29 says that, Seest thou a man diligent in his business, he shall stand before kings, he shall not stand before mean men. This is one translation, and I read from another translation. Do you see a man skillful in his work? He will stand before kings, he will not stand before obscure men. Daniel was taken as a youth, and when he got to Babylon, he was trained in the culture and the knowledge and education of the Babylonians. And he was so blessed with skills from the Lord that Daniel could stand in the presence of high and low people. And he could prove to them that the God he served has a better plan for his world and for the people who have chosen to put their trust in him. May the Lord cause us as we serve him that our hands and our entire body become skillful so that we can work before nobles and before kings in this our world. Hallelujah. Amen. And like I said, Daniel served under these five kings. And during the reign of Darius, Daniel was placed as one of the three high officials in the kingdom of King Darius. And this got to the other side of other officials that how come a foreigner you have come to our land and you have been made one of the three this one we will not accept it and you know what they did they planned and they did everything to see to it that this Daniel comes down but you see when God elevates you no matter what you will still be there no matter what, God will keep you there. But sometimes it comes with cost. But the cost is, are you prepared to bear that cost? And you are able to do it if only you are a practitioner of the word of God. And when God is with you, you will be able to know that indeed the God you serve is with you. No matter the enemies who are around you. You see, these guys got their own plan. And told the king, king, we know that you are the king. Make sure that nobody for a period will bow down to any other God except you and your God. Initially, the king's mind was not on what they were planning. So he accepted it as they brought it. And they said, okay, if you have accepted it, now we want you to put it into writing. That if anybody is found who is serving any other God, then this and that and that should be done to the person. And the king said, oh, this is easy. I will pen, append my signature to it. They knew what they were planning. And so when this was decree, was finally signed, what do you think Daniel should have done? I have read that king says I should not bow down to the God I serve. And you know, before Darius came, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, including Daniel, has proven to the people of Israel before King Nebuchadnezzar that there is only one God whom everybody must serve. And Nebuchadnezzar attested to it after he put them in the furnace. And they couldn't bend because he saw the image of the fourth man who happened to be God himself. And he decreed that among my kingdom, nobody should speak anything bad against the, the God of these three guys. I'm sure the people forgot. 
that Nebuchadnezzar has said this about the God that these three guys were serving, including Daniel. And then came Darius. And these people came thinking that we can speak something against the God of Daniel. May anyone who rise up to speak against you and the God you serve, may God himself rain the judgment upon that person. And God did it. And how he did it is so nice and so beautiful. And that's how God does things in our lives. And when Daniel heard this decree, he rather went into his chamber, opened his house towards Jerusalem, and prayed, thanking God, that God, I thank you that this decree has been signed. And the people were hiding, and they saw him three times a day. So they went to the king. King, this one, we saw him feeling, feeling. Not even with CCTV, because those days, there was no CCTV. And they reported exactly what he was doing. But you see, when God has destiny uh, providers for you, they will do everything for you. The king, when they brought this to him, they said, king, you cannot do otherwise, because in the laws of people of Midis, you cannot uh, go back on your word. And the king said, okay, I stand by it. Let's do what I, I said should be done to the person who does not bow down to me and my God. And so the punishment was that Daniel be thrown into the lion's den. But Daniel chapter 6 verse 14. The king in distress sought to deliver Daniel. Because he knew the type of man that he, he was. But he couldn't because the laws that he had around him had entangled him that he couldn't do otherwise. So he said let the writing be done. Daniel be thrown into the, the lion's den. And then verse 16, you and I would have thought that Daniel has been thrown. Lions who have been starved, they should be, they, 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 uh, Daniel should be dead by now. But the king goes to his chamber and he could not sleep. And he wouldn't even eat. He wouldn't accept any entertainment of any kind. In distress, I don't know whether he was praying for Daniel. Because he got to Daniel at the dawn of the following day. And whispered, Daniel, has the God whom you serve day and night been able to save you? It takes only destiny helpers who can think about you this way. And may God this week and throughout the rest of the year left bring destiny helpers who will think and think and think better about you throughout the things that you do. That this Daniel, whom I have thrown in, in, in the lion's den, that only one person, he should have been dead by now. But the king goes and whispers, has the God whom you serve continually or day and night been able to save you and God will come through for you and for me. He will save you. Amen. Sometimes the devil thinks that he has cornered you. That there's no way, as the, the Oasis uh, SOI sang last week, when our backs were against the wall and it looked that there was no other way that we could go through what was coming on us? God made a way. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11. For I know the plans that I have towards you. Plans are, that are of good. To give you a future and a hope. And God's plan is that he will deliver you. He will deliver you. No matter the situation. God will come through for us. And so the question that I will ask you is. What should have been the prayer of Daniel? Maybe you would have said that Daniel should pray that the king's heart, uh, heart be ch changed, okay? So that he can say that, okay, I signed it. I have gone against it the first time. Or maybe God should kill the king so that things can change for the better. Or even God should curse those who formulated this plan. But none of these were the prayers of Daniel. His prayer was that, God, I thank you for allowing this to happen so that you will prove yourself sovereign. You will prove yourself that you are in control. You will prove yourself that those who put their trust in you, you will never let them down. May God, throughout the rest of the year left, never let you down as you pass through this year. And God will come through for you. He will come through for you. He will come through for you. 
Or maybe the other prayer that maybe you would have expected Daniel to pray was that, well, God, deliver me. And I'm sure he may have done that. And God heard him. Romans 8, 20 says, says that sometimes when you are confronted with problem, how you ought to pray, you don't even have the, the, the words to even pray. But the Holy Spirit in us prays on our behalf to the extent that words cannot even be used to describe the kind of prayers that we pray. And may the Holy Spirit that God has given us come to your aid in such situations where you think that you are alone and that everybody has left you. May you have that cause to pray in the Spirit and ask God to direct your path. The God of Daniel is the same God we worship and we serve today. He is faithful and he is good. And he provides for us and he protects us. And he wants us to be his friends in whatever we do. Choose to put God above all else. Express your gratitude to God daily for who he is. And remain faithful to him and to his calling in your life. The other aspect that I want us to learn about this situation is that when the devil connect, connects you and think that there's no way, when you practice the word that God has given you, you make the same people pronounce things about your God that they would never have pronounced. And I will read part of it. Daniel chapter 6. Turn with me to Daniel chapter 6. This is the king. After he has inquired about Daniel, uh, Daniel chapter 6, verse 19. At the first light of dawn, the king got up and hurried to the lion's den. When he came near the den, he called to Daniel in an anguished voice, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you serve continually, been able to rescue you from the lion's? So the king noticed something about uh, Daniel, that Daniel is a servant of the living God. May you be a servant of the living God in the eyes of your enemies, in the eyes of your bosses, and in the eyes of all people as you practice the word. Because people look at you. If you are in a workplace and they are doing deals and you are involved in it, don't think that people don't look at what is going on. They see it all. But may God let you live practically with the word. That you prove that you are a servant of the living God. And that none of the evils that are happening around you will ever come near to you. Because the question they ask is, after this, Daniel, we can get nothing to accuse him of as far as his administration is concerned. Except to do with his God. May you at your workplace confound people with the ability and the skills that God has given you. That nobody can say anything against you except the God that you serve. The other aspect that you cause people to say about you is that after uh, Daniel responds, uh, the king has inquired. Daniel responded, I can't live forever because I have done nothing wrong to deserve this punishment. And the God has said, sent his angels to shut the mouth of the lions. And the Bible says that the king commanded Daniel to be brought out of the lion's den. Don't tell me the lions were not hungry. As some people, as I was preparing, some of the people were ridiculously saying that, oh, the lions had been fed. That is why they didn't chew uh, Daniel. Because if they were really hungry, they would have killed Daniel. Let me prove to you. When Daniel was brought out, the king called for all the conspirators, those who formulated this kind of evil against Daniel. And the Bible says that when, sometimes, brothers and sisters, let me say this. Don't sin. Sin doesn't affect you alone. Don't commit wrong. It doesn't affect you alone. Their wives, their children were sitting there somewhere. But because of this diabolical plan that they had against Daniel, they were forced to bring their children, their wives, to punish them. Can you imagine that? 
they weren't part of this conspiracy. But the king said that bring their children, bring their wives, and they threw them into the lions. And the Bible said that before they could even touch the ground, some of them, their bones got broken in the sky. That tells you that the lions were really hungry. And that's the punishment that came upon them. Because Daniel was a practitioner of the word. May you be practitioner of the word throughout your lives. But the statement that the king made, chapter 6, verse 25 to 26, is what I want us to, maybe I'll add 27, to learn. Then King Darius wrote to all the peoples, nations, and men of every language throughout the land. May you prosper greatly. He is wishing his subjects prosperity. I issue a decree that in every part of my kingdom, people must fear and reverence the God of Daniel. Can you imagine that just because standing firm and practicing the word before the eyes of people, God's name has been honored. And the king who was a heathen God is proclaiming this, that everybody who is living in my kingdom, you should never be seen saying anything evil against the God of Daniel. It should have ended there, but look at what he's saying. For he is the living God. Our God lives. He hears our prayers. And he will come through to honor you and answer your prayers. And he endures forever. His kingdom will, be, will not be destroyed. His dominion will never end. He rescues and he saves. He performs signs and wonders in the heavens and on the earth. He has rescued Daniel from the power of the lions. So Daniel prospered during the reign of Darius and the reign of Cyrus, the Persian. Hallelujah. All because he stood to honor God in everything he does. And now unbelievers are saying good things about the God that you serve. They are saying good things about God that you serve. The devil said it when he came before God in Job. Does Job fear you for nothing? Isn't it because you have put up a hedge around him? You destroy it and see if he will serve you. Let the devil destroy the hedge God puts around you. Prove him wrong with the word that is in you. That God will come through for you. Amen. I pray that God will help you to excel in your academic life, uh, the students here. Let me tell you, Daniel was only 17 years. And the Bible said that because he put his trust in the word of God, he was found 10 times better than his contempor co contemporary uh, students. May you, as you put the word of God ahead of you, may he come through with you and make you 10 times better than your peers. Better than everything that you do. And may he bless you with knowledge. That you'll be able to excel. And not only in, uh, for our students. Also for our businessmen. May God come through for your businesses. That whatever you do. Your hands will prosper. Over your business. And for our marriages. I pray that God will come through for our marriages. That our marriages will be the type that people will come. To inquire about the secret behind. How we are prospering in our marriages. And those who are working, may God come through whatever form of work you are doing. May he come through for you and prove himself faithful. And also in our relationships, may God help us that we will form better relations with one another and help us grow where there will not be a Timi Wakame system in, in, in amongst us. Hallelujah. For those who don't understand to wait where there will be uh, bickering amongst us. But that we will live in prosperity in our relationships. And whatever you are involved in, I pray that God will come through and prosper you. And today our prayer will be, dear God, thank you for who you are and all you have done. You are my God, my protector, my provider, and my friend. I love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. God bless you.
God bless you. Shall we bow down our heads and pray? Maybe you are here. We are talking about the word, the word. The word is Jesus Christ himself. You have never had any encounter with this word. And you want to have association with this word. Just pray a simple prayer that God, I invite you into my heart. And let Jesus, the word, be part of my life. Just pray a simple prayer. And if I've already invited Jesus into your life, pray that you have dominance and eminence in your life. And that you'll be able to live, to practice that word wherever you go. Father, we come before you this morning thanking you for your word that you have shared with us through the life of Daniel. May we strive to emulate the way he put his trust and his faith in you. And that we will also be able to live our lives before people and prove to them that yes, we serve a living God who cares about the people who put their trust in him. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Amen. You can do better for Jesus. May heaven fight your battles for you. May the glory of the Lord be elevated over your destiny in the name of Jesus. As he did for Daniel, may he visit you with the same grace and favor. Please, if you need a communion, please raise your hand. Thank you. I understand the original communion table. Um, I don't know what something has happened to it. So I had wanted us to uh, go back to the old elements. But as it stands, I'm told it can only happen from January. So please be patient with us. I'm going to get the, uh, the elders to superintend and ensure that happens. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 26, verse 26. On the screen for me, please. As they were eating. Oh, sorry. If you need a communion, please raise your hand. Keep it high till you get one, please. Ushers fast. Are we done? Any more? Any more hands? Raise your hand. Let's all become participants this morning. Thank you. The Bible declares, are we here together? Are we together? Good. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed it, and broke it. And gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And this morning we come to dine with the Lord. And as we continue to picture what happened 2,000 years ago, the Bible says they were eating. Then suddenly Jesus takes the bread. The Bible says he blesses it. And Father, this morning, I pray that you who gives bread to the eater and seed to the soul, let this bread become the bread that comes from heaven. The bread that we eat and live forevermore. I pray this morning that this bread no longer will be physical bread, but let it minister deliverance. Let it minister healing. Let it minister restoration. Let it minister fruitfulness. As any womb that is believing you for a child touches the bread and the wafer this morning and eats. Let the essence of the power 
in the body of Christ cause a transformation in that womb. Any hidden sickness this morning let the bread break that power. Bread of life given that we might live become a source of life this morning. Jesus breaks it and says take eat for this is my body. So today the wafer you'll be taking is no longer a wafer made by a caterer or a baker but the essence of the body of Christ. And the Bible says that in the same manner, verse 27, please. He took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. Verse 28. Let's work together. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. And this morning, any area of your life where you are struggling with something that seeks to take the best of you, a sin that you are struggling to shed off, I pray this morning that may the blood that has power to cleanse, may the blood of Jesus that is able to walk into the corridors of your past, walk into those corridors and wipe the slate clean again in the name of Jesus. Any form of bondage that seeks to take the best of you, I command it broken in the name of Jesus. May the power of the new covenant, a covenant that is established on better promises, May the covenant work for you this morning. Shall we be on our feet and take your time and take the wafer off. Take it off your communion this morning. Jesus takes the bread, verse 26. He blesses the bread and he says, take Eat, for this is my body. So the wafer in your hand this morning is the body of Christ. And shall we eat it together in the name of Jesus? In the same manner also the Bible declares, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it to them saying drink from it all of you for this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for many for the remission of sins so the cup you are holding today is a symbol of the blood of Jesus and also a seal of the covenant that the Lord has made for you. Shall we drink together the blood of Jesus shed for you? And Father, this morning, as your children have partaken of the bread and the cup by faith, let the heavens declare of the resurrection power that ministers healing, of the blood that breaks the bondage of sin and the speakings of any others. I command patterns that seek to work in the families of your children. Let that power be broken in the name of Jesus. Let there be a manifestation of the glory through the exchange that you gave to your children. For you took a shame 
and you gave us your glory. Let it begin to shine forth over your children. Let their gifts begin to shine forth. Let their businesses begin to shine forth. Let their children begin to shine forth for the excellency of your honor and glory. Let it come forth for your honor and power in the matchless name of Jesus. And together God's people shall say, Please take your seats. And at this time, we'll prepare our offerings. <coughs> As we come forward, I want you to know that God daily loves a cheerful giver. And today we are bringing our fights and our offerings. We remember that it is God who gives us power to make wealth. And as we bring our thighs and offerings today, may the heavens be open for you. In Jesus' name, amen. I have a God who never fails. I have a God who never fails. I have a God who never fails, who never fails, who never fails, forevermore. I, I have a God who never, who never fails. I have a God. Some people ask me, say, Some people ask me, say, Which in the baby, which in the baby, I just didn't tell them, say, I just didn't tell them, say, Jesus, Jesus, make me fine. Some people ask me, say, Some people ask me, say, Which in the baby. Everywhere he went, he was doing, he was doing, and my team. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. Amen. What practitioner are you? What practitioner are you? Thank you very much, Dr. Romeo, for bringing us the word. Daniel as the word practitioner. It's a lot for us to learn from it. God bless you. What do we say to um, Pastor Romeo? God bless you. Amen. Okay, I've got these notices here. Let's um, take note of them. Um, we're supposed to have a baptism service, but that has been postponed to Saturday, 16th December. And so all registered members should please take note of the new date. Um, it's now Saturday, 16th December. The next baby dedication comes off um, next Sunday. And all those who wish to dedicate their babies should please pick up a form from the church admin office after the close of service and um, register as such. Um, are you a couple here? How, can I see those who are married here? Married, yes. Proudly so. And happily so. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so we are all coming together on, on 24th December. We, we are happy to get the family and the marriage and family life department um, helping us to strengthen the bonds with our wives or spouses. And we're doing this um, 24th of December at the new executive lounges. Like on the time is 5 p.m. There's a little contribution we need to make there, and that is 600 Ghana cities per couple. And as you know, if you know the, the, the place, this is highly subsidized. The dress code is formal. And side attractions, live band, memorable photo shoots, surprise gift segments, exchange of love notes, couples love dance, and all that. There will be an interactive session, please. If you're a couple here, know that you are part of this. There's no um, exclusion anywhere. All right? Amen. Amen. As part of Christmas um, festivities this year, we're going to have a business fair. That is on Sunday, 17th December. Registration is ongoing and is going to end on Friday, 15th, so we can plan for the fair. And so those of you who want to shop for Christmas, there's a time for you to save, some, um, save and, and, and buy from us among ourselves, and if you are at a workplace or you sell anything, you are SME, you have any business you want to sell to us, there's a great opportunity for you to do that. There's a donation of, for um, um, exhibitors, and that is 200 Ghana cities. Uh, please pay so that we can get a canopies and all that, and we will make sure that at the end of service, everybody sees what you have, and we'll be able to buy what we have to buy. Amen. I come with three bands of marriage. Amen. The first one is a final bands of marriage. He who finds a wife finds a good thing. I like the shout from there. And of course, we obtain favor with the Lord. Amen. So I'm glad to publish the final bands of marriage between Mr. Isaac Okansi and Miss Shalom Sebenu, who are both members of this church. The wedding comes off next Saturday, 9th December, 12 noon, right here in this auditorium. Amen. The next is the second bands of marriage. And I'm glad to publish this bands between Mr. Dominic Sepenu and Ms. Benedicta Ajato, who are both members of this church. The wedding comes off on Saturday, 16th December, 1 p.m. at the Trinity, um, at right in this auditorium. Amen. And I come with the third one. That is the second bands of marriage as well. And I'm glad to publish the Second bounce of marriage between Mr. Benedict Okori, who is a member of this church, and Miss Ami Gatawa, who is a member of Prairie Heights Church in West Fargo, um, North Dakota, USA. The wedding comes off on Saturday, 16th December, 2 p.m., at a private location in East Legon. And if anyone knows of any just cause why these couples, three couples that I've mentioned, should not be joined together in holy matrimony, please inform any of our pastors and uh, for all, forever. You hold your peace. Amen. Amen. Right. So we're going to welcome those who are worshiping with us for the first time. And also pray for those who celebrated their birthdays in November. And so we want to see those of you who are worshiping with us for the first time. Please, if you're such an individual, let's see you by hand. Amen. First time. Thank you very much, my sister. Please be on your feet. Yes, my brother, please be on your feet. Amen. 
Thank you very much. Anyone else? Our mommy is going to pray with you. So thank you very much. Thank you for where you are. Um, we're going to, are you giving them any sheets at the moment? Or um, right after we pray, please follow our brother who is in the um, Lokesh. That is his name. Uh, follow him. He will give you a lot more information after, um, after the prayer. I also want to see those who celebrated their birthdays in November. Please, if you are such an individual, rise to your feet. Yeah, Mr. Dollar. Great. Oh, Uncle Grant. That's my wisdom, our teacher. Yes, thank you very much. Happy birthday to all of you. And at this time, we'll call our mommy, our special mommy C, to give you a word of prayer. Amen. I never know what to do with these things. <laughs> Happy birthday to all our November borns and welcome to those who are visiting us for the very first time. Shall we pray with them? Father, we thank you and we honor you, Father, for those that are standing before you. Father, those that are visiting us today for the very first time. Father God, as your word came forth today, I pray that as they came, we know that they did not come by accident, but that you had a purpose for them. Thank you for the word that they have received. I pray that as they go, may they have a desire in their hearts to be like Daniel, practitioners of the word. And as you have been faithful to Daniel, I pray that, Lord, this week may they see your faithfulness. The God of the 11th hour, the God that came through for Daniel at the 11th hour, may you come through for them in any areas that they find challenging in the name of Jesus. Bless their going out and their coming in. And so we pray and thank you, Father God, for adding another year to our November bones. Thank you. The Lord, you have brought them this far. You who have brought them this far is the indication that, Lord, you will take them to the place where you have ordained for them. For you have plans for us, plans of good and not of evil, to give us a good future. And so, Father, we declare over them that the future is bright ahead of them in the name of Jesus. That no challenge shall be able to trip them in Jesus' name. And the God that they believe will see them through. And so, Father, we pray that in honoring, honor them. I pray, Father God, that you perfect all things that concerns them in the name of Jesus. And we pray favor upon their lives, that you bless the work of their hands and everything that they set their hearts to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Worshiping with us this morning is the CEO for London, Nana Sapong. Nana, give everybody a wave offering. Praise the Lord. Allow me to take maybe seven minutes of your time this morning with three very important announcements. We are all aware that the BEC results are in. And uh, as a family and as a church, uh, it was our privilege to present the, uh, the maiden students uh, for the exams this year. And the results are out, and I want you to have a look. Media, please. Just take your time and have a look. Let me sit here and talk. So you can see that uh, Akun Amwa Kenneth, his aggregate was seven. And he chose Addisable Adisab College. He's got the place. Uh, Promise. If you look at Promise, you will see that for every subject he took, he got what? Nine ones. So he's also going to Addisco. Then, uh, which is, of, uh, sorry, Addisable. Then Theophilos Alexander uh, also got an aggregate of six. He's going to St. Augustine's. Then Abu Bright is also going to St. Augustine's. Then, uh, what's her name? Anastasia is going to Wesley College. The next one, please. So you can see that our West was an aggregate of 15 and 12. And these are the children from the orphanage. So 
this is your school and these are your children. Praise the Lord. And to be honest with you, if this does not stand out as the best results in the central region, it will be one of the best. Praise the Lord. And I know this will be the best results that uh, uh, has come out this year. So over the weekend, we went there, uh, Mommy and myself went there to interact with the, some of the, uh, those who have parents and then the teachers to congratulate them for a good work done. Then I was shocked to discover that the young man who got nine ones, one person got one nines, another person got eight ones, two get, sorry, uh, two got six ones, then three got five ones, and it follows to the only one person did not get a one. I was shocked to discover that even though the president of Ghana has offered us free uh, SHS education, money to buy the items to go to school. And, no, and, and for one of them, the dad was already getting, preparing the boy to join him in farming. It's criminal. Honestly, just because they can't afford the items they have to buy. And when the items were, because the young man going to fancy him, uh, he's one of the boys from, uh, from the home, he got eight ones. And this was a boy who was suffering with hernia. And immediately after the exams, we had to take him to Cape Coast Teaching Hospital for a surgery. But thank God he's come out so well. And uh, so we just had to, to keep him in the guest house in the home. The point I'm making is this. Seven of them are unable to go to school if you don't support them. And this morning, my appeal is very simple. Some of you may want to say, <clears throat> Daddy, I want to take one of them uh, for, for this term just to get them. And you know, you know when they have to go to school? When, when do they have to go to school? Say it loud. Tomorrow. And for seven of them, they've bought nothing. They don't have them. So if we had not gone there over the weekend, we would have done all this work. You see, let me give you a better background of the, of the... How many of you have been to the orphanage before? Okay. The, we have an orphanage and also a school. It's a private school. But over 75 of all the students in the school are on scholarships. Because there is no way the people in the area can afford to pay the fees. But about 25% of them, their parents are well off. And basically, they and your support is what keeps the school going. So the young man who got nine ones, there's no way. They've, you know, I asked the dad, so your boy is going to school, on, and this boy is going to at the Central College. How is he, he told me, how is, the, how is the boy going to go to school? I'm looking for, uh, I've started looking for a loan. So I said, you know, the cost is about 3200 So to give the little boys some pocket money, about 4000 are you going to get that money? He said, yes. I said, wow. So I asked him again, how you going? He said, I'm, I'm going to look for a loan. So the head teacher, knowing the gentleman did not understand what I said, asked him, now, <laughs> Sikana Pastor Boy and it's Asa in to wait. Do you understand the amount Pastor Kingsley mentioned? He said, Oh, Nancha also four thousand. No, it's not four thousand or him. Guess what he was thinking about? Forty cities. Ah. Forty 
see this? I said, I said I know, I, no. So he said, then he explained the, uh, uh, the 4,000 CDs in the old currency. And how much is that? 40, 40 million. Also, I know the bomb in the Yakopu. To wait, he has to join me fishing. So this morning, I want to do two things. Um, uh, I just want one of the bowls to be put here. Uh, whatever you are led, just let's help. There are seven of them who need uh, our help. We have to make sure they are able to get their items tomorrow and ensure that by Wednesday they are able to go to school. So if you are led, some of you may say, I'll take one of them. I'll give a hundred cities, I'll give, but we have to raise the money today, okay? The second thing I want to do, so as I'm speaking, you can just come and uh, as you are led, whatever you have, just come and put it in the bowl. The second thing I want to do, I did, did I present my case well? Did I, did I do well? Did I speak well? Or maybe I, I think I was. We are supporting seven children to go to school this week. Yes, you can do Momo, please. So if you put the Momo on for us, please. I want you to imagine your own child going to school nine months and. Uh, wow. Wow. Please, can you put the Momo details on the screen, please? Some of you can say, I'll take a child, you know. I'll do, if you desire to do that, please see me after the service. But I don't believe I have to be coming here every academic year and asking for support. So what I desire to do with my foundation is to extend it to uh, include those who will be going to the senior high school, okay? How many of you know your dad has a foundation? Hey, wow. And as it stands, it only covers students who go to university. So I seek to add uh, those who will be going to the senior secondary school. So what I desire to do this morning is to raise partners. Partners who will join the Kingsley APJ Foundation and every year we will meet, we will meet two times. And it will be a time of prayer, declarations, proclamations, and also a time of encounter. And if for any reason you would like to be part of the foundation, you can raise your hand and uh, the ushers will give you a slip. You fill it in and you, you pass it on before you leave. If you desire to be part of the Kingsley APJ Foundation to support uh, 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 the young people, please raise your hand. I, I want to promise you, I will never come asking you for money um, till we all meet and we discover a genuine need and see how we are able to support the children. So if you want to be part of the foundation, raise your hands. The ushers will come and bring you an envelope. Thank you. Okay. The next thing I want to do is the best for tonight. How many students are here? University students. Okay. How many of you brought a friend to, with you today? How many of you invited somebody with you? Because I'm going to give some tickets out for free. Uh, Sonny Badu's concert. And, okay, did I say that last week or was it to the second set? I said that. Okay. So I said, if you invited somebody, you get a ticket. Who brought somebody with him? I didn't say that part. 
For the first service, I didn't. Okay, all students stand up for me. All students. Don't stand up if you are not in the university. Okay. Hey. Okay, I have. Okay. Thank you. Hey. I've got only 10 tickets in my hands. Who was born on a Friday? All the Friday boys come forward. The, yes, I'll go to the next stage. You were born on a Friday. You haven't changed your name. Okay, that's for you. That's for you. Hey! Hey! You were all born on Friday. Can I see your passport? Can I see your color cards? So, what's your name? That's a Friday. You, your name? Hega. If we are Hega. Shaba Kuta Rabasa. See, see, see. See, Dada Kuta. Okay. Okay, this is what I'm going to... Please, please be seated. Uh, I've agreed with Sonny that I will pay for... Uh, you see, the, the plight of the students is what has touched me. So whatever is left, uh, your dad will have to bear... Oh, that's, that's a good offering there. So I want all the students to get tickets. At least we want to give about 100 tickets to the students. Okay. So, um, so if you want a ticket, stay behind, okay? I think I understand we've run out of the tickets for the standard uh, uh, seats, but there are tickets for 100 and 200 cities, so you can have them. Shall, can, shall we be on our feet? Thank you. The third item I was going to talk about was the air conditions for Oasis House. And as I asked the Lord how to go about it, he made it quite clear. I have over 200 uh, children. I should just contact, contact them and they would. One of them uh, was kind enough to uh, pay for 10% of the whole cost of the air conditions. And we are raising $200,000. This will only, is only for those who believe that they are Pastor sons and they have the means to help. So I have about 70 uh, more left. So if you also believe you would want to be part, please see me immediately after the service. Raise your hands up. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift the beauty of his countenance over you and grant you peace. And now may the grace, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship be with us all. Amen. And surely, Amen. Please, if your child will be going to senior high school, as the children of this ministry prepare and go to school this week, I pray that your presence will go with them. Let them stand out. Let them be the best. Let all that they've learned 
become a manifestation of your honor and glory. Let them shine forth in the schools. Grant them uncommon favor and let them stand out as amongst the best. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.